Let's get started by importing the assets that we'll be using for our project. The assets we'll be using for this course was made by Luke Cutler and you can download this for free from the Render Man for Katana examples page. I recommend you download the repackaged version of this asset included with this course as all the Katana recipes included with the course have been configured to work with the repackaged asset. To import the asset, hover your mouse over the node graph and press the tab key on your keyboard. Type importomatic and press the enter key. You may have noticed that you didn't have to type in the entire word. You can simply type in the letters IMP and since there are no other nodes that start with that name, you can now press the enter key to choose this node. If you can't remember the exact name of the node you want, you can use the asterisk symbol to search for nodes with the characters you entered present in its name. For example, if you want a render man node that changes the global render settings, but all you can remember is the word global. Press tab and type the asterisk symbol followed by the word global. And as you can see, it filters it down to just a few nodes with the word global present in its name. This concept applies to all the nodes in Katana. To access the parameters of the Importomatic node or any other node in Katana, we need to set the edit flag on the node. Hover your mouse over the Importomatic node and press the E key on your keyboard. You can also set the edit flag by hovering over the gray square on the right side of the node and left clicking it. You can now see that the parameters of the Importomatic node is now available to you in the Parameters tab. In the Parameters tab, click on the plus icon and choose Add Alembic Asset. Choose the Hidden People ABC file and click Accept. At this point, you cannot see the imported assets in the 3D viewer. This is because Katana has not yet cooked this Importomatic node. Cooking is a process Katana uses to execute the ops associated with the node. While we will not cover ops in this course, in much simplified terms, you can think of ops as a series of processes Katana runs in order to generate a 3D scene. You can initiate this cooking process by setting the view flag on the Importomatic node. Hover over this node and press the V key. Or as before, by clicking on the gray square, but this time, the one on the left side. While it seems like much has not changed, let's toggle the view flag on the Importomatic node by using the Shift plus V hotkey while hovering over the node. Observe what happens to the scene graph. As you can see, a small gray arrow appears next to the root location. One of the key concepts in Katana is its ability to only process information when it's needed. This is called deferred loading. In order for us to view any part of the generated scene data in the viewer, Katana requires us to expand the necessary scene graph locations. You can expand the scene graph location by clicking on the gray icon in the scene graph. Let's keep expanding the scene graph. I've chosen to expand the giant hand group until I've reached the sub D mesh location. If you now hover your mouse over the viewer tab and press F on your keyboard, you can see that we are finally able to see some geometry in the viewer. Notice that only the locations we have expanded are visible in the viewer. This functionality allows you to effortlessly navigate and work with the small portion of a large scene, for example. All the locations available in the scene graph are still processed during a render, independent of what is visible in the viewer. However, Katana allows you to limit the locations processed for rendering by using working sets, which you will learn about later in the course. You can expand other sections of the scene graph by repeating the same process. Alternatively, you can right-click on the root location and choose Expand All. This will expand and process all the available locations. I'd be very careful with the Expand All feature, as this has the potential to be very costly if done on a complex production scene. But in our case, this will be fine. To navigate the viewer, you can use the mouse wheel to zoom in and out, middle mouse to pan, and alt-left click to tumble. Similar controls are available in the node graph where you can middle mouse to pan and use the scroll wheel to zoom in and out. Another key concept of Katana is that every scene graph location is defined by its type and the attributes associated with it. You can see the attributes associated with the location by selecting it in the scene graph and switching to the attributes tab. To clarify this, let's look at a quick example. I will create an arbitrary location in Katana using the location create node. Press tab and type in LC 
And as you can see, it filters down to just the nodes with the letters L and C in capitals. You can use this method to quickly create any node which has this capitalization in its name. Set the edit flag on the location create node and let's change some of the parameters of this node. Let's set the location to root world geo temp location or you can call it whatever you want and the type of this location to sub D mesh. If you expand this location, you can't see any geometry in the viewer because there are no relevant attributes associated with this location. What if we can copy the attributes associated with one of the geometry locations from the asset we imported? Let's create an attribute copy node. In the input, connect the location create node. Here, I'm using the back tick key to pick up and drop the connection into the node inputs. Connect the importomatic into the copy from input of the attribute copy node. Set the edit flag on the attribute copy node and the view flag on the importomatic node. Select the giant hand sub mesh location and in the from root parameter, click on the gray icon and choose adopt theme graph location. The attribute we want to copy exists under the geometry group. Let's copy everything under it by typing in geometry in the from adder parameter. Similarly, let's do the same to the temp location we want to copy the attributes to. If you now set the view flag on the attribute copy node and look at the viewer, we can now see the hand geometry in the viewer. This is one of the core concepts of the Katana workflow. So always remember, it is all about the attributes. I encourage you to play around with this in order to really understand this concept. In the next lesson, we will learn to customize the Katana user interface.